Hello and welcome to Azure Live Map to the Future. Today I have a, another special guest, uh, Mr. Keith Atherton, and today we are going to talk about Microsoft certifications. Uh, hi, Keith. Welcome to the show. Hi, Matt. Good to be here. Thanks for having me on the show. How are you? I'm yeah, fine. Thank you. So um, before we start, can you tell us about yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Keith Atherton. I've been a software developer for over 20 years, uh, working for various companies and sectors in the UK and US. Uh, I currently work as a senior dev developer, senior software developer for an IT consultancy in Edinburgh called Quorum. And uh, my contact details are on screen there if anyone wants to learn more or follow me online. Okay, great. So um, certifications are very important. Uh, for developers and other sectors in the IT, but uh, there are different um, paths in Microsoft certifications. And sometimes it can be confusing for the starters. Can you uh, tell us about this certification path? Yeah, sure, absolutely. As you say, there are so many options. Uh, and the reason I wanted to give this talk today is because I'm still quite new to certifications as well. I have passed a few already, but it was the same for me. It was quite overwhelming to see how many options there were and how many different paths were available. So it was really part of this talk was really to decipher a part of that and really kind of break down, you know, the different roles, different paths you can go on. Um, but yeah, absolutely. There are so many options out there. And my other question is, how do you prepare for a certification exam? Because there are, there are lots of ways, for example, Microsoft Learn, some uh, sample exams or from books, or you can try to uh, enter an exam and see how it goes, <laughs> it's another option. Yeah, certainly a high risk option um, and depends on your knowledge and experience already. Um, but it's a really good question and it's something I'll cover in a bit more detail because, as you say, you've got great resources like Microsoft Learn. Uh, there are many others out there, as you say, such as books and online courses. And in the experience I've had so far, I've had some success with some more than others. And I can maybe go into a bit of detail with those there. Um, but yeah, as you say, there's certainly a lot of options available, which is a, a nice dilemma to have. Okay, great. So uh, shall we start? Yeah, great. Okay. Excellent. So thanks again, Matt. Uh, so uh, today this, this talk is going to be how to prepare for Microsoft certifications. Uh, just as we said there, we're just going to look at some of the, the ways that we can prepare for these certifications, some of the options available out there as well. Uh, and just I'll just cover a bit about my path so far uh, and, and how I've been finding it. So this is really from a point of view, I've taken a few already. I'm still fairly new to this. And I just want to share my experience with anyone out there who is also new, is thinking of taking their first one, wonder what's involved. Um, so that's uh, that's what we'll go through today. So my soft certifications, um, there's a, a small screenshot there on the right hand side. We can see all of the different potential roles um, that are available for certifications. So uh, recently, in recent years, uh, Microsoft certifications have been role-based, where previously they were product-based. So if you wanted to learn uh, web development, you know, ASP.NET, or it was using SQL Server, if it was more data-focused, then they will be for the specific products. But in recent years, it's based on the role that you're looking to do. Uh, so on the right, you can see a few options there, like developer, administrator, um, even things like DevOps engineers. There's so many different paths you can take. And it's really geared, to, geared around those, uh, those specific roles that you wish to take. Um, typically, to earn a certification, you need to take one or more exams. Um, and there's several types as well. So the, the main types that uh, Microsoft categorized them is the fundamentals. Um, now, these are often just to understand concepts of a particular role. Again, whether that be developer or whether it be uh, based on the, the data that you would use. 
So some of those fundamentals are the Azure fundamentals, a good overview of the services and how things work, uh, data fundamentals, AI fundamentals, and so on. Uh, another type is the role-based, and this is where we can get associate and expert level certifications. And again, that's really focused around the roles that we're seeing on the screen just there on the right. Um, there are some additional ones as well. So we've got things like specialty. So this is if you have something very uh, niche like SAP workloads in Azure. Uh, there's things like Microsoft Certified Educator for those who are teaching others. And some other Microsoft Office technical ones as well. So the, there are plenty available. So we'll look at some of the benefits of the certifications. Now, th these are really just quotes from the Microsoft certification portal. Uh, I won't go through these in detail, but as you can see with the stats that they're, uh, they're showing there, they're showing things like, you know, people have more confidence to do the, the role that they're doing. Um, things like they've got greater work autonomy and independence because of a a certification and uh, also decision makers saying that uh, people with certifications they can provide added value and I've seen many statistics on this and I've seen some statistics where they can say it can add you know ten thousand dollars or more in you know real money terms of value uh, again I've seen various stats and they do change based on the different studies but again seeing that someone who's done certification can add you know add add value uh, and we can see on the, the right hand side as well, we've got some things, you know, um, some people are reporting that they, they earn a promotion because of certification as well. Uh, they're doing it to upskill or, or keep their skills up to date and having greater job satisfaction as well. Um, so for me personally, uh, the, the reason I've decided to look into certifications, which is uh, something I've been meaning to do for a few years, but only recently found uh, the time to study and give it a proper go, is really that I wanted to learn things like Azure and some of the other Microsoft uh, technologies. Um, and it was something if I was to take a certification, it would give me a good grounding in the skills that were required. Whereas if I was just working on a specific project, I might just learn what I need to know online and just cherry pick certain skills here and there. But again, going for a certification means I need to learn you know, a good round set of skills and minimize the chance of having gaps in that knowledge as well. So that's been my main focus. So very, very briefly, uh, my journey so far, as I say, I'm still uh, fairly new to this. I've done a couple of fundamentals so far, uh, lucky to pass first time with uh, the Azure fundamentals and then the Azure AI fundamentals, uh, AI and ML, something of particular interest to me. I'm also uh, currently studying for my Azure Data Fundamentals. So I've got a few of these, again, these foundational ones that I'm looking to pass. And then I'm looking to move up to some associate and expert level uh, certifications as well. Uh, so for me, I'll, I'll be looking at Power Platform and security compliance and identity afterwards, the SCI. And then after that, have a few associates and uh, expert levels because I'm looking to get more, um, I'm a developer at heart, but I do want to learn more on the design and the architecture side of things. So that's the, that's the path that I'm going along just now. So the Microsoft certification portal, there are plenty of certifications and exams, and that's one thing we'll look at today is just, it can be quite overwhelming. Uh, it certainly was for me. There are just so many options. You know, where do you go? Where do you start? Um, it may be worth bearing in mind, again, the role that you're after. It might help you decide upon the path that you want to take. Do you want to take a, uh, a fundamentals and then build upon that? or you, you don't need to take fundamentals. Uh, the last time I checked, they're not prerequisites for anything else. So you can actually just go ahead and jump into an associate uh, or an expert. There may be pre prerequisites for the expert based on a, an associate level uh, certification. So it really is you know, the, the role that you want or the role that you're aiming for, perhaps. There's a really good chart. There's a, a link at the bottom of this slide. Um, the Microsoft certification chart. Um, this changes often when there are new, uh, you know, certifications added or some get retired as well. And this is this is really good. You can see there are options for maybe the field that you are looking for. So for me, again, my main focus at the moment is with Azure. 
Uh, so that's the particular area that I'm focusing on just there. You can see there are, it's a bit small, but there are plenty of options there, such as you know, data analyst, Azure AI engineer, uh, so on and so on. But you can see in the other fields as well, things like Microsoft 365, Dynamics, Power Platform 2, and actually off, off this screen further below, there is some for the security uh, side of things as well. So there are plenty of options there. Um, a very quick word on certification renewals as well. So later on in this talk, I'll actually just go through exams, the costing that we've got for the different exams as well. Uh, again, in recent times, the, the renewal process changed. So previously, uh, you would take a certification uh, exam, you would earn it, it would have an expiry of two years. And then within the two years, uh, near the expiry, you would actually take the full exam again with the latest uh, curriculum, and that would help you renew. So my understanding was it was the uh, you know the full cost you would pay for that exam and you you know you'd go through that same process again. However, in December 2020, uh, there was a change to this. So Microsoft now changed it where uh, within six months of the expiry, you can actually take the certification renewal for free. So there's no cost to that. Um, and I've not done one myself yet, um, but I do believe it's something you can take at home for free and you just need to pass the things that have changed with that particular certification. It's not the full exam. And there are ways to retake as well. So if you, if you did unfortunately fail, you can do a retake immediately. Uh, if you was to fail then, I believe you have to wait 24 hours before you can do a retake. Uh, so there's a bit of a process on the retakes as well. And I have a question about uh, renewable exams. Please. So you said it's the, uh, the full exam. The, is that mean the renewable exam is smaller than the actual exam or are there any differences? Yeah, that's a, uh, it's a good question. My understanding is the, the renewal is, is a smaller one. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it really is just taking uh, you know, a, an exam on the parts of it that have changed. So my understanding is the renewal is, is, is much shorter, much smaller. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. So what we're going to do is look at some uh, learning resources. So uh, Mert, you had a good question early on, mm -hmm. you know, Microsoft Learn, what other resources are available? What, you know, I can go from my perspective of, uh, of what's worked for me so far. So as you say, Microsoft Learn, really, this is, the, you know, this is king for me. This is the best place to go. Um, it's a free online platform that Microsoft provide. They've got all these different modules, so you can work through them. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see uh, the, for the Azure fundamentals. So you can see it's broken down into different modules and there's a lot of gamification. When you complete each module, there are some XP points that you that you gain. Uh, you can see it's ticked off. These, these parts have been completed. Um, but the platform's really good because there's a lot of reading material. Sometimes you get some videos as well just to just to watch along. But often you can get sandboxes to get hands on with the services themselves as well. Um, and this is really handy because often that is provided for free. It's like a Microsoft Learn sandbox um, where you can try these. On a rare occasion, it has been, I think, with the Azure AI fundamentals, I actually did use my own subscription. So there was a small cost, which which I used when I did that one. But I think it was just a few pounds or a few dollars. You know, it's less than five, uh, five dollars worth. Um, but yeah, really good platform. And the good thing with the Microsoft one, you can be confident that it's been kept up to date. Because again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, these certifications can change. The services are changing quite often. Some merge, get renamed, get retired, new ones are brought in. So you'd really want your learning material to be as up-to-date as possible as well, to, to be relevant. So for more detailed information, there are Microsoft Docs. Um, uh, as you can see from the screenshot there, we've got things specific to the products, things like .NET, uh, Microsoft 365, SQL Server, and so on. So this is something, if you're after a bit more detailed documentation, examples, 
uh, this is a really good place to go as well. Um, something that's been uh, added fairly recently, which is really good, particularly if you're a first time um, taker of certification exams, is the Microsoft Exam Sandbox. Um, so this is something they've provided where you can actually demo, uh, take a demonstration of the certification exam experience. And you can interact with all the different types of questions. So the, the screenshot there is very much what you see when you take the exam. Um, excuse me. And the good thing with this is that th this isn't the actual questions. You can see there, there's just a dummy question with what's your favorite sound. Um, but this is a good thing just to get used to the UI. Even the NDA that you sign at the start of the exam, um, the progress bar in the top corner to say how many questions are remaining. This is a really good thing that when I first took mine, this, sand this sandbox didn't exist. I went into this exam room. I didn't know what to expect. You know, what kind of UI? How, is it just check boxes, radio buttons? I didn't know what to expect. But this, this is another good thing if you're brand new, just to give you some confidence of this is how the UI looks, how it feels, when it finishes, you know, how the exam finishes. There are some good options near the top there you can see with review later or you can leave feedback. So if you had any questions, and this happens in the real exam where you, you thought, that's a bit ambiguous. I'm not sure what they're asking. You can actually give that feedback to Microsoft to say, you know what, I'm, I didn't find that too clear. I have an issue with this question. So I recommend to anyone who's first time to exams to, to give this sandbox a go. I think it's really, really good. So we'll look at some other resources. Um, <clears throat> so YouTube, uh, there are other video platforms available, obviously, but YouTube's a really good one. There are the many different uh, uh, people putting information out there just for certifications, walking you through the modules, or even giving you exam crams, such as here on the screen, I'll give a special mention to John Savile's technical training, uh, absolutely brilliant channel. Uh, John keeps things up to date. It gives you study crams. It can be like an hour and a half uh, or so for you know uh, pre prepping for your Azure fundamentals. So it's a really good overview. He gets the whiteboard out. He explains things very clearly, really, really good. And there are many other people out there who do a really good job as well. So if you want to complement your learning with Microsoft Learn and maybe with watching videos as well, this is uh, this is highly recommended. So we'll look at some paid sources as well. We've gone through some free ones, but there are some really good ones out there, which uh, varies in the level of investment or the cost. So uh, Mehet, as you suggested earlier, you know, there's a possibility of books. Um, there are plenty out there. I've personally not used any books for certification exams. Uh, reason being I found Microsoft Learn and some online video courses to be really, really good. So I've I've just not looked further afield to books. <clears throat> However, um, one thing to bear in mind with books is again, how up to date is the material? Um, as we've said, some certifications that can change quite often. Um, I believe the Azure Fundamentals last changed in November last year, uh, towards the end of the year. So if you found a, a book for Azure Fundamentals, but it was five years old, and there's no additional material to show those up-to-date services or that up-to-date knowledge, it's worth bearing in mind how up-to-date you think a book may be or that particular book. Um, so that's just one thing to bear in mind. So we'll look at some course providers. Uh, so some that have worked well for me, Udemy being one of them. Um, I actually tried this for the Azure Fundamentals and the AI Fundamentals, and I found some good courses. Uh, I'll give a special mention to Scott Duffy, who's on the screen just there. Uh, his course has been very good, very clear. I believe there are many other good instructors on that website as well. Um, so yeah, plenty of people worth checking out. Um, the good thing with some people like, like Scott's courses is there's confidence if that they're kept up to date. Again, again, if you're looking at a course that was provided four or five years ago, but the certifications actually changed just a few months ago, it is worth bearing in mind of how up to date is this material? Is there more up to date resources for learning out there? 
So you see on this course, the header there, this AZ900, which is the Azure Fundamentals, you can see the date stamp there, that December 2021. So this is one of those instructors, Scott's one of them, who keeps his material up to date. As soon as it changes, he's on the ball and many others are, just to make sure that you're learning that latest material and it's relevant for the exam. Um, one other thing with uh, Udemy as well, we can see this course is currently on sale, uh, $16.99. Uh, it, it used to be $49.99. Um, I've noticed that Udemy have very regular sales. So unless you're in a hurry uh, to buy the, the, the course right now, I'd probably suggest maybe waiting a few weeks because uh, they may well have another sale. Um, Another one I've, I've heard very good uh, reports of is Skylines Academy. Now, it's not something I've personally used myself, but I do know many of the people who have passed exams and raved about Skylines Academy. So just for illustration there, uh, we can see the, again, the AZ900 for Azure Fundamentals, which I would say that is a really good, if you're brand new to certifications, that's a really good starting point. It's a fundamentals, gives you a great overview of, of Azure, the services, how things work, um, you know, it's, uh, it's it's a really good starting point to then go from to decide where you, you know, if you want to specialize in a particular role. Um, another one is Pluralsight, uh, one of the market leaders, very, very popular and something I've been happy using for years, um, whether it be for certifications or just for general learning. Um, again, for illustration, the, the AZ900 is just there. We can see the breakdown of the modules when they were last updated with the date stamps there. Um, the good thing with Pluralsight and some of these other courses as well is that some of them include practice exams as well. So as well as the learning material, you can actually have a shot that they're provided practice exams. Um, <clears throat> so it's something to bear in mind. I actually did do a course, it wasn't with Pluralsight, and purchased an unofficial practice exam for Azure Fundamentals. I did take it the, the evening before the exam. Um, I was lucky enough to get 100%. And then when I took the actual exam, the actual certification exam, I did get a, a good pass, but it was 83%. Uh, you typically need 70% to pass. So while I was happy and it was a it, it was a clear result, it, it didn't quite match up with the unofficial practice exam that I'd taken. So just um, maybe I was off ball questions, maybe I was just lucky on the night, who knows, but something to bear in mind. So with uh, Pluralsight as well, I've noticed that some of the premium subscriptions are the ones that provide specific uh, certification exam prep paths and some of those practice exams as well. So if you can stretch or if it's provided by your company, if you're lucky enough to get that and they can provide the premium one, it could well be worth it if that's if that's your goal. Um, another method to give is to LinkedIn Learning as well. So I actually pay for LinkedIn Premium personally and LinkedIn Learning is something that's provided with that subscription and I've done many courses on LinkedIn. I try and use it. Uh, I try and use that learning portal every week if I can, just to learn something new. Um, I've been very happy with the material. Uh, lots of video lessons and sometimes quiz. Uh, you know, quizzes at the end of each module just to test that knowledge as well. Um, I've noticed on LinkedIn Learning there are some of the uh, Azure certification. Um, preparation paths available there. Um, I don't believe they're all covered. Some of them were though, uh, such as the Azure Fundamentals, which we can see right here. Um, and again, there's a cost to that subscription, but if it's something you pay for already, it may be something that could be useful to you. So we'll have a quick look at some even higher cost uh, learning options as well. Now, you could use a learning partner. Um, <clears throat> so these could be training providers um, partnered with Microsoft to actually provide uh, training and learning for these certifications. Um, I've used some of these before. So on the screenshot, I do have a list of what was showing for the UK uh, last time I was there, but you can, you can actually select your country and it would show the providers for you. Um, 
Uh, for those in the UK, I've actually used Learning Tree, New Horizons, and QA in the past uh, with previous jobs, not for certifications, but just learning in general. I've been happy with all of them. So I'm sure they're all really, really good providers. Um, but that's another option. You know, does your company have a budget? Do you have a budget for, for this kind of learning? And the way this can kind of pay off, so we can see this example, I've taken in Learning Tree as an example with their uh, AZ900 for the Azure Fundamentals. It's live, it's instructor-led, and the cost last time I checked was £595. Now with that, obviously an instructor, you can have someone hands-on, uh, you know, an expert, you can ask questions. If you're unclear, you want to drill down into a specific field, that's where that value can come in. You're going to get that approach. Whereas if you're learning online, you get a bit stuck with something, you don't have that option. So, uh, you know, if you can afford that and that's going to be useful for you or for your team, if you're providing it for your development team or or whichever team that you, you manage, uh, that's another option as well. <clears throat> and then similar to uh, the uh, learning providers, uh, Microsoft also on their learn portal they do have a link to their instructor-led courses so a similar thing again they can provide training here i've got an example for the azure fundamentals for a day at 730 pounds or two days for 1470 these prices change quite often so it's worth checking on them but again you can maybe have confidence it's going to be instructor-led you can ask questions and that's where that particular uh, particular value does come in So what we'll do is we'll have a we'll have a look at some specific costs breakdown for for an exam. Excuse me. So again, we've been looking at this entry point of the Azure Fundamentals. So we'll look at this one, and on the on the screen there, we can see that to gain the certification, we've got one exam. It's the AZ nine hundred exam or AZ nine hundred, depending how you pronounce it. Um, I've selected UK, which is £69. Um, one thing to bear in mind, uh, the AT will be added on top of that. So this is quite uh, British centric for these costs. But, it, you know, again, you can select your own country. But this is, you know, around £82.80 for the cost of that exam. Uh, again, this is a fundamental one, one of the good starting points. Now, if I was so, to look at... Oh, sorry, um, please. Yeah. I have a question. So yeah, sure. what if if I fail in the exam? I need to pay the cost again or Yeah. Yeah, ex exactly right. It's it's you would need to pay to take it again. Um you need to pay uh reschedule schedule that new exam unless you had a voucher or a discount or something that could help you uh as you say um you, you would need to pay again to book a new slot for the exam. Okay. But that's a really good question, and that's why some of um, something that we'll come on to in a moment, which is potential discounts um, and even free exam vouchers, can come in and can come in useful. Um, because if you do you find you need for retakes, and that's something that could put you off, there are ways you can actually reduce that cost as well. So we will we will cover some of that. That's a good point. So if we go past the fundamentals, I'm going to look at one of the expert certifications here. Um, and on the screenshot, we can see on the very far right, if we want the Azure Solutions Architect Expert Certification, that's the, uh, the, the small badge with the three stars there. <coughs> Excuse me. To the left, we do have an exam to take for that. But also there's a prerequisite. And this, uh, you know, this this was at time of recording. Again, these certifications can change quite often, including the prerequisites or the number of exams that you have to take for them as well. But currently, we have the expert one with one exam. But for that exam, there's also a prerequisite on the associate level that you need as well. And <clears throat> below, we can see the uh, screenshot of the cost for that exam, uh, 113 pounds, which again, we need to add VAT. So if I was to look at the total cost for this one, I would factor in the cost for the associate exam, assuming we pass first time, of course. Um, and then the expert exam, again, hopefully pass first time. So we can see 271 pounds 20. We can see the cost can, can accrue if we were paying the full price for these exams. Uh, and again, we'll come on to some options that can help with this. 
<clears throat> so we did mention briefly before as well about the uh, you know practice tests. Again, I had uh, mixed results with with just one unofficial practice test that I, I tried with a, a different provider. Microsoft do provide um, their official practice test. Um, so for the, the AZ900, we can see you pay for the access if you want a 30-day access, £73.26, or a 60-day access, £80.66. So uh, my understanding is uh, I've not used their official one, but if you do pay for the access, you can take it as many times as you wish in that time period. So you can really have a few practice runs before you take the real thing. Um, again, it's not something I've used, and for fundamentals, I've been I've been lucky so far. I've passed both um, you know both of mine first time. I've not needed this, so it's something worth considering if you want extra level of confidence, or if you just want to you know just try it without this practice run. <clears throat> so we're going to take a quick look at some uh, discount and and uh, options uh, again, just to. Can we reduce the cost, particularly if we're concerned about uh, retakes or those more expensive exams? So one that we'll look at is 30 days to learn it. Um, now, this is a really cool thing. On the on the screenshot, we can see the different roles that you may be aiming for. Uh, we can see things like Azure AI Fundamentals, Azure Solutions Architect, one that I mentioned before. And if you take um, the challenge and you complete it within 30 days, which is um, to go through all the learn modules for that particular role. Um, you then get awarded a 50% off uh, exam voucher at the end of that. So it's not something I've uh, participated in yet, but it's something I would look to do um, when the right role is there that I'm aiming for. So again, I'm going for fundamentals just now. Um, but again, this can half the cost of the exam. So uh, yeah, really worth looking into. Another thing I wanted to give a mention to as well is the Ignite Cloud Skills Challenge. Now, this did actually end at the end of November last year, um, but it may return and hopefully will either in the next Microsoft Ignite or other event that they provide. Um, so the way it worked is they had 12 different challenges. You can see some of them in the screenshot there, such as Azure Database Admin and Dynamics 365 Supply Chain Management. And it was very similar to the 30 days to learn it, that if you uh, completed all the learn modules um, within that time frame, um, they would actually send you a free uh, exam voucher. So again, that gives you a free shot at the exam. Uh, and if you're lucky enough to pass first time, you've got the certification for free. It's well worth looking into. Uh, so fingers crossed that comes around again. I want to give a big mention as well. I'll call it the Scrooge Award because this one is a really good money saver. Um, and it's something I've used a couple of times now and it's been really, really useful. If you look at the Microsoft virtual training days uh, and before the pandemic, it was just Microsoft training days. You could do them in person. Um, but these virtual training days are something that they provide online training with a, a really good instructor. Uh, again, I've done, I think I've done two of these now. Um, I've been really, really happy. Training's great. Um, you can see from the screenshot, they've got certain dates that are available. They do get booked up. So it's worth checking these very often. Um, it's not just for fundamentals as well. It's for all different parts of the Microsoft tech stack. Um, <clears throat> but the ones I've done so far are for fundamentals. Um, you get really good training. And then at the end of it, typically within a few days after completion, <clears throat> they send you a free exam voucher as well. So it's a win-win. It's really, really good. Um, and again, I found the free exam voucher has been offered with the fundamentals. Um, so yeah, really, really valuable. Um, and uh, yeah, it could be good for getting some of those fundamentals uh, at, at no cost, if you were lucky enough. Um, Oh, one other tip I'll mention with this as well is that when I've gone to the training days, uh, this is a screenshot of the UK provided one. Uh, these are the dates that are available there. Um, often they've been during the work day, which is not always a good, depending where you work, if you can't get the time to study during the work time, or if you don't want to take time out of work to do this. Um, somebody, uh, Sarah Lean, gave me a really good pro tip where if you 
go just to Microsoft events page, you can actually see these uh, training days provided uh, for, for different countries, different regions as well. So if you find it in your language um, on there, it may be that you can find the training day in the evening. Um, so it's outside of work hours, so you can still take it. So one thing to bear in mind. And uh, please excuse the cheesy stock image. Uh, but the other thing I wanted to mention as well was the employer support. So if, if you're lucky enough, you, if you work for a company where they actually provide training or they may bring uh, an instructor in or that was, that was maybe done before COVID more often um, or, you know, they would actually pay that cost or give you um, access to a Pluralsight subscription or, or Udemy or somewhere else, you know, Use that if you can. That could be really valuable. Uh, you know, if you go and search on those portals or CBT nuggets or places like this, you might actually find certification prep courses on there. Um, so it's, it's worth looking into. Also, if you're lucky enough to work for a company where they provide you, uh, you know, uh, exam vouchers, if they're a Microsoft partner or discounts, or they actually pay for the exams or willing to, to contribute towards the exam costs. This is also something worth, uh, you know, worth asking about if it's not offered. Um, and also is as valuable, if not more valuable than the actual, you know, costs of the exams and the learning could be the actual time, you know, during the workday to study, you know, uh, time is very, very precious. Uh, many of us are very, very busy. So if you can get a few hours a week, if you're lucky enough during the workday and there's a benefit to your employer, they can see those skills could be put into use for the company. You know, there's something in it for them. Um, that could help you, uh, you know, study towards these exams as well. So it, it can all be useful. And the last thing I really wanted to mention was, again, uh, other ways you can uh, prep for these certifications. There are, we, we covered things like YouTube and, uh, and other training sites with costs, but there's so many blogs out there and people giving certification advice or study guides, you know, how they, how they do their time management, how they incentivize it, you know, how they uh, keep their motivation learning for things like this. And there's so many learning resources out there and practice tests and so on. Um, I'll give a special mention to Greg Asotti, also known as Azure, Azure Greg. Uh, he's, it was actually Greg's initial path on passing some of these certifications that actually inspired me to take up studying myself. He had some really good study guides there as well that helped me get started. And there are many other people who are blogging about this as well. So uh, yeah, worth looking online and reaching out to your network online as well. So uh, we've reached the very end. Uh, thank you, Mitt. Thank you, everyone else who's, who's been watching. Thank you for your time. Um, uh, if anyone does want to contact me after, uh, after this session today, my contact details are on screen. I'm always happy to help if I can and share my knowledge. So please do reach out. Um, but yeah, if there are any questions from, uh, from anyone just now or from you, Mitt, uh, please, please go ahead. Um, thank you for your presentation. And can you see the TV chat right now? There are some comments and a question. Great. Do you want me to read or can you see them? Uh, please, yeah, if you, if you could, uh, um, if okay. you could read them out. Thank you. <clears throat> so um, there are some comments, but sorry if I can't do, get the right pronunciation. A good mix. And says, in my experience, Microsoft Learn is useless for AZ-104. And also, books are okay, but most likely outdated before you take the exam. Oh, I see. Yeah, that does sound like an issue. Uh, again, yeah. have, having a... You know, learning from the up-to-date material is absolutely uh, crucial because these seem to change very, very often. Uh, so, yeah, it's really worth bearing in mind, um, you know, uh, how up-to-date that material is and just doing your best to try and learn from, from the latest information. Yeah. And uh, there's a question from Lucky Kill 76 uh, Hi, as some as well, just starting my Azure certification journey. This info is great. And will this slice be available anywhere from downloading? Yeah, um, if it's possible, mate, I could uh, 
share the uh, share the slides afterwards if that's okay. Okay, uh, that will be perfect. Thank you. And I have a question for you. Please. And there are some uh, beta exams. And what are beta exams? Um, is it? Can I get a certification if I pass that exam? That's a really good question, actually. I've come across a few of these, and I know uh, I mentioned Gregor before, Gregor Sotti. I, I believe he's taken some of these uh, beta exams, which are uh, kind of new new exams that have been released. Um, it's not something I've looked into. That's a good question. I've always looked into the, you know, the generally available, you know, the kind of the live ones, if you will. Um, but, uh, yeah, I believe some of them, I don't know if the costs are different and you can give feedback on the exams as well. Um, but yeah, no, that's not something I've come across, but a uh, good question though. Okay. And um, I have another question. Um, Please. This question comes from a friend. Um, you, you can see some people get all of these certifications with different pets, for example, developers, uh, DevOps, administration, a data, AI, most of them, and some of them, or most of them are my friends. But how is it possible to get all of these certifications? How can I put this? Um, I think the time investment to get these uh, certifications, for me, even for the fundamentals, is actually quite significant. I do find I need a study plan. I need to be very careful with my time. Um, <clears throat> I do know someone at the moment actually who's been doing passing a fundamentals one per week and he's he's crushing it he's doing really really well um <clears throat> i think he's he's using my soft learner maybe just a couple of a uh, couple of the video courses and it's really impressive i know for me it's going to take a few more weeks because i just couldn't afford that amount of time and particularly if you have commitments if you have you know, if you have a family, you have children or pets or other, you know, uh, responsibilities, you may just not be able to find that kind of time to get through so many. Um, <clears throat> the I think the other thing I'd mention as well is I'm very careful on the path that I'm looking to do for the cert certifications for me. So primarily I'm a developer. I'm looking to do more with design and architecture down the line. And because these exams, uh, these certifications need renewal when they expire, which is it's now a, a year, a, a, a year expiry. If I did have lots and lots of associates and uh, expert level ones, I may find that I'm constantly, constantly renewing them, always learning, uh, you know, always having to revise and get ready for them. So I'm going to be trying, me personally, going to be quite careful which ones I pick because I may also want to look into AWS or other certifications too. And if, if if I fill all of my time with these Microsoft ones, I may not have time for other things or side projects or other things I want to do. Um, I think some people as well are lucky enough to get time to study during their, their work day, uh, <clears throat> something their employer can provide. So again, for me, it's mostly about time and that's another way to find time to gain more certifications as well. So yeah, I think it's maybe maybe people's learning ability as well. Maybe it takes me a bit longer than the average person. I don't know. Uh, you know, some people may learn it very quickly. The, the first time they read through Microsoft Learn and they've, they've got it straight away. Who knows? <laughs> hey, thank you. So my last question is about certification pass. And in certification pass, um, please correct me if I'm wrong. The first uh, fundamentals exams are optional to complete the PET. So um, do you recommend getting these exams? I would personally. Um, I've taken, um, I've passed two fundamental certifications already, currently studying for a third. I'm not looking to pass them all. I'm looking just to take the ones that are, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm looking to take the ones that are relevant to me for the job that I'm doing now, but also the job that I want to be doing. So for me, I've done Azure Fundamentals AI uh, as well. I'm currently studying data, which is something I use very, very frequently. Uh, Power Platform, which is something I'm currently using, and security, just to get a good overview of architecture. There are some other fundamentals for 365 and, and you know Dynamics, I believe, as well. Um, I, I'm not looking for those at the moment. so. 
Yeah, it really depends what you want to take. But as you say, in terms of the path as well, the last time I checked, my understanding is that the fundamentals are not prerequisites for anything else. So if you wanted to become an expert with the um, uh, you know, the solutions architect, let's say, uh, you don't necessarily have to take the fundamentals. However, I found it's a really good grounding, a really good foundational uh, set of skills ready to, to jump to associate and to move upwards. Um, so yeah, it, I find it useful personally, but it's pure up to you. If you just need, if you just want to go for the expert, you could just go for the expert, see if there's a prerequisite with the associate, just do that one or do that two that you require and just aim to get the expert. So it's, it's purely personal preference. Okay, thank you. So um, thank you very much for your presentation and thank you for everyone joining us today. So I think uh, about the presentation, you can share it from your Twitter or I can share it if you want. Great. So I uh, hope to see you in another episode with a new topic. And thank you again. Excellent. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you. See you. Thank you. Bye.